yes, 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 people. Back again. Lots to talk about this weekend. It's been a busy, busy, busy packed agenda that we're going to uh, chop into tonight. Uh, so just want to say thanks again to all our listeners missing it up and down um but all those guys that have been supporting us and um, really look forward to sort of hearing your views and all the support that you've been giving us um this weekend we've got a big fight um one that will see the return of the wbc diamond belt um which was last revealed i want to say for mcgregor mayweather so to have that for an official fight um is uh, very satisfying uh looking forward to breaking it down with our pundits and analysts we should be getting spencer fearing on the phone shortly so once he's dialed in uh, we'll make sure that we uh, get some good uh, content and opinions from him. Uh, but really, just to talk about what we're going to break down this weekend. So number one, uh, Spence Jr. versus Mikey Garcia. I think this is a fight hotly anticipated by most of the hardcore boxing fans. A pugilist's dream. Uh, two undefeated fighters who are going to challenge for the IBF welterweight title. Uh, last week, Friday, we saw the return of Yard and Dubois. Anthony Yard and Daniel Dubois. They both got KO wins in their debuts at the Royal Albert Hall. While Liam, while Liam Williams also retained his uh, middleweight crown. Um, we will also be breaking down the Porter and you just fight, which seemed to cause a bit of controversy. We'll ask you guys, do you think Porter was the right winner? Um, and we're also going to kick in some boxing news, namely around the MTK Global and Top Rank partnership that was announced yesterday. So I'm here with my co-host, Rafi, as per usual. How are you doing, sir? You're not too bad, co-host yourself. Good, good, good. I'm good, my man. Yeah, so uh, this week we'll be reviewing the Dimitri Bivol against Smith Jr. fight, which took place this weekend. And uh, obviously on the undercard for that was Maurice Hooker as well, who was defending his title. And we'll look ahead to the IBF featherweight clash between Tevin Farmer and John O'Carroll. The card will also feature Katie Taylor, and uh, as well as the St. Patrick's Day show featuring Michael Conlon. And last but not least, we'll also discuss the zone signing of Golovkin and what that has, um, what ramifications that has for the middleweight division. And remember the numbers 01506. 243-403. That's 01506 243 And the number's on Instagram with all the details. Perfect, man. So thank you for that, Rafi. Yeah, so as per usual, um, guys, we just want to say thank you for all the support. <clears throat> A lot of social media activity has been going down. Rafi and Tom, who Tom's not here today, but they've been doing some great work putting up some posts on all these social media outlets. So guys, be sure to kind of check that out and support. Um, I think I want to start the show off. Um, I think really no better place than uh, the fight of the weekend. Um, uh, or should we start with uh, Anthony Yard and Daniel Dubois down at the Royal Albert Hall? What would you what would, what would you prefer, Sir Rafi? Yeah, sir, I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, let's go with. Uh, we'll go in order. We'll go down at um, Royal Albert Hall this weekend. Royal Albert Hall. So yeah. So. Um, Yard and Daniel Dubois both got wins. Um, first time in over 20 years that there was a boxing card being de- held down at the Royal Albert Hall. Uh, Frank Warren uh, put on a uh, show, which was, to be fair, pretty exciting. Um, I understand he compared Dubois' performance uh, to that of Gorman. Um, and I think they're definitely looking to get those two sort of uh, fighting at the back end of this year. Um, so in terms of my point of view... Um, Dubois was able to execute his raw power. Where, what for you? And obviously Yard was impressive with you know his IQ. Um, yeah. Liam, was, Liam Williams also showed great KO power. What was the performance of the night for yourself? I think it'll be unfair. It's unfair to say this, but I'm going to go with Anthony Yard because I think he showed a lot of fine tuning his development mm-hmm. in the main event. And while Dubois got the stoppage win very very early. And that was off the back of quite heavy criticism because off the loss of that Kevin Johnson, uh, sorry, well, after beating Kevin Johnson the way he did, he took a lot of stick after that fight Mm -hmm. and uh, he showed good mental strength to come back and get the early stoppage. But as I say, he needs a step up in opponent and there are still a few chinks in the armory. You see that with the lack of lateral head movement. And that's probably something that someone like Nathan Gorman's going to want to exploit because mm. he's someone that can create those angles, yes. which compensates for his physical shortcomings. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably one of the most interesting thing about that fight for me is, you know, in terms of the movement, he still looks a bit stiff. Um, yeah, credit to him, Kajanu was a formidable. Well, I say formidable, but it was a tough opponent for this time of his career. Um, but yeah, you do think, you know, the lack of head movement, the stiffness, the kind of 
the the, the muscles because he's a big guy. Um, it's robotic. You right, and you yeah. just think you know he needs to probably just work, which it's going to be tough for that for him. But he needs to just work on being a bit more fluid, being a bit more loose, just letting the yeah. hands go, as they would say. Um, but at times he was impressive. You know, he connected with some big shots. Um, and at the end of the day, sorry, at the end of the day, um, I think you know for what they want out of his career I think he's moving in the right direction so yeah yeah fair play to them um and Mr Yard or Yardy Yardy um beast from the east mm-hmm. I thought that and through his own confession at the end he was disappointed not to put his man on the canvas but I felt that from around about round three onwards he could have taken him out any time he wanted he just wanted to show that he where he'd faced criticism before with loading up and um his accuracy was called into question in previous fights. He yeah. wanted to sort of send out a statement that technically I can do the business a little bit more mm-hmm. before then getting the stoppage. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, and um, I agree. Um, I mean, after that performance, though, you know, that we saw and we're going to kick into another fighter in the light heavyweight division, but do you think after that performance he showed you anything that would say he would give Kovalev trouble? I think we also have to look at the benchmark because mm-hmm. that's not someone that you can use as a benchmark for someone like Kovalev. Um, it's an impossible question to answer. So I'm for me personally, he needs another fight within the top 10. Mm-hmm. So someone like a Sullivan Barrera, mm-hmm. someone like that um, would be a good benchmark. And then off the back of that, then perhaps. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, and I think, again, even a Sullivan Barrera is a high opponent because, again, he beat... Uh, Joe Smith Jr., who obviously yep. lost to Bivol, and Barrera also lost to B- um, uh, Bivol. But Barrera obviously was a was a world champion, yep. um, so he's competing at the highest levels, even against uh, your your Andre Wards. You know, whether he's lost, he's still competing at a high level, which is far high and above anything um, that uh, Kovalev, I'm sorry, on uh, Yard has done. Yeah, and I think also we're very quick to put Anthony Yard into that world level. Um, ecosystem whereas domestically he hasn't even faced the best fighters domestically exactly. and to be fair neither has Callum Johnson yes. he faced Buglioni and I say that with the greatest of respect to Frank yeah. Buglioni Josh Buatzi we're talking about these guys and thrusting mm. them to European world level Callum Johnson hadn't fought a top two domestic level before he went and fought Beterbiev. Yes. But he still went and gave a great account of himself exactly. despite he, the loss. And he got and he, obviously again we saw uh, his performance on the weekend uh, stopping Monaghan. Now, Monaghan's not a great name, but still, yeah. the fact that he's able to go across the seas and impress um, on 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 the undercard of of Bivol, I think, is it, it shows shows. I say, give credit to the guy. So, have to be. You, have you, to. you you are right, um, and that's what's the most interesting thing. And you know, one of the things I would definitely want to be tackling today is just you know, in general, when you look at this weekend and sorry, the weekend just gone and this weekend coming, you kind of say to yourself, wow, the light heavyweight and the welterweight are really the most stacked divisions um, in, in in the whole of boxing. Because when I look at that light heavyweight, there's some serious players. Bivol showed that he is one of them um, with that performance. I think it was a bit of a systematic beating of, of Joe Smith. Yeah. Um, but then you're Minus the body at, slam. Minor, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but then you're looking at it from a point of view, that Porter fight, you gas impressed, and we'll kick on, we'll obviously touch on that, but you gas slightly impressed in terms of he was probably not given any chance um, of, of, of yeah. having a say in that fight. Then we've got Spence Jr. and Garcia. Now, if Garcia should win, Garcia automatically kind of becomes one of the number one welterweights. Um, I don't think he'll win, but again, you know, taking this fight, we've got to give him credit. And then you say to yourself, in the light heavy, as you've mentioned, forgetting the Callum Johnsons, BT, B- 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 yeah. um, uh, Kovalev, Buatzi, and he's not world level, but do you know what I mean? It's such a competitive division that, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens there. So, yeah, um, for me, um, overall, the Royal Albert Hall, um, Frank Warren's night, I would say pretty impressive. Um, I think the guys did the, the, what they needed to do, all got good wins. Um, and actually, it's one of those things that I've seen from the feedback. A lot of people are very positive about that. So, yeah, yeah um, uh, fair, fair play to them. Um, and you feel it was overdue as well. I mean, the Royal Albert yeah. Hall hasn't staged boxing since when? Frank Bruno. And that yeah, was a was long, long, long time, time ago. ago. Yeah, exactly. And I think that was the 20 plus ones. 20 plus fights years sorry so for me um yeah it's definitely a great venue it looked great on tv as well so that was something I really say i was really impressed with um yeah and um yes yeah, from that perspective um uh it was it, it was good so um i will move on to uh let's go to the saturday night fights bivol 
versus uh, Smith Jr. Um, you name you, you mentioned the WWE move, um, but yeah. overall, what did you think of that fight? I think Bivol did what he needed to do, and um, I think bar two rounds, there's a case for saying he won every round. Bar those two, yeah. Um, it's a shame that he couldn't really land the concussive shots that you probably mm. would have wanted for mm. that stateside debut, but. Mm. He got the job done. It was domination from start yeah. to finish. Yeah. What about yourself? Yeah, I mean, he definitely impressed. When I say impressed, I think, you know, um, Joe Smith didn't do much um, as an opponent. And I was struck, you know, he obviously he hit the scene uh, with a bit of a strong reputation after that Hopkins um, uh, win, victory. Um, but Bivol was just, to be fair, I won't even say on top of his A game, but... I think yeah. he knew that he wasn't really troubled with what was coming back. The odd counter came back at him, but I think he was just so, for me, systematic with the jab, um, putting hitting, landing to the body. So from my point of view, I think when you look at someone like Bivol, um, I would even say that he doesn't even need to fight at light heavyweight. And I know you're going to come onto the topic, but for yeah. me, his performance, his shape, his size, his mobility, if he even wanted to go to super middleweight, I think he could actually really cut it and probably maintain some of his power. But... Yeah, um, that that was my thoughts on the fight. Yeah, were you quite surprised at how aggressive um, Joe Smith Jr. came out? No, from the get go. You no, weren't? no, because I think that's his style. I think his aggression, his passion, his heart is probably what makes up for his lack of technique and maybe yeah. fighting IQ. Um, so that did not surprise me at all. I find, if anything, I didn't. Th- I think he could have been a bit more aggressive. But again, you can't. There's only so much aggression you can yeah. get if you can't touch somebody, it right? It plays into his hands. Exactly. That's and what Bibble wants. Ex- exactly. So yeah. at some point, maybe he was holding back. But I do feel that, you know, even when he was trying, Bibble just pivot, like, just literally left, right, and he was out, out of range. So, um, yeah, for me, um, good good win for Bivol because what he's doing when we start looking at his career is that he's just getting, like, great names on his CV. And you've got to say yeah. to yourself, what is he, like, 18 yeah. fights, if that? Do you know what I mean? He's still a novice. Still, it, he's learning on the job. He's learning on the yeah. job. But that's, and yeah. that's what I say. And I remember Chris Congo, when we interviewed him about admittedly, two years ago, and he was saying he truly believes there's some guys in the amateurs that can come out and beat season pros. And I think you're seeing that because the Eastern Europeans, they've really got the, and, uh, and the Russians and the Kazakhstan, they've really got it knuckled down to the T where they say to themselves, you know what, we're going to get a length of amateur fights, yeah. hone our skills, work on the craft, and then come out to the, the the pros and you've seen it with Lomachenko obviously he's a level above it's been going Skolos. on since Golovkin Golovkin is one yeah. Chaniev who he do, who Komi beat same type of guy so there's a lot of these guys I think there was one Ishmael, Ishmael Madurev as well he won on by knockout so yeah. yeah I think that's their formula and it seems to be working yeah yeah, and on that note, shout out to Richard Comey as well because he's another one, not yes. from Eastern Europe. Yeah, but of course. <laughs> as um, yeah, Mickey Amu, our guest last week, mentioned uh, Richard did that very, very quickly with just an amateur pa- pedigree. Yes, exactly, exactly. And and as you mentioned, he was sitting down with the president yesterday, I think. So yeah, yeah, it's all online. So guys, make sure you go and check that out. Congratulations um, as well. Exactly, he's got he's got his honorary name, key to the country. Um, so yeah, so outside of um that one, Bivol Smith, um. For me, uh, the other one was the Maurice Hooker. Um, what did you make of that performance? Yeah, it was. He just did. He did. It was almost a mirror image performance of when um, he faced. Sorry, the name's gone off the top of my head. Um, Tennyson. Brit- no, no, no. The British lad. Sorry, the name's gone off the top of my um, head. Terry. T- t- f- t- Terry Flanagan. Terry That's Flanagan, the, yeah, yeah. Terry Flanagan. It was just using the jab really well, yeah. utilizing his height advantage, and that's always going to be a massive, massive advantage for him yeah. at the weight. And it's probably why he hasn't moved up. Yeah. Um, there are still fights for him, like Josh Taylor. But going back to your initial question, yeah. um, it was start from start to finish. He used the jab really well, and he put his man down in the tenth as well. Mm-hmm. So, off the back of that, it. I mean, there was mention as well that he wanted to face um, Jack Cotterill. Mm. I and, think that's yeah. next, right? That's next. That's what what he wants next. Yeah. yeah. And I think I think it's quite smart because he's fought in the UK already. So he's not yeah. going to be afraid to come back to the UK. Um, I think when you look at it, um, I think his opponent, um, Le, Pe- Le Pierre, um, he came <laughs> in with a good record. I want to say he was even undefeated. Um, so that's a good, he had a good, good, Good bit of pedigree in terms of, you know, his record. Not yeah. fought a load of big names, but at the same time, at lightweight, you know, your name after two fights sometimes. Yeah. So I felt he didn't have to take that kind of a challenge on, and he did. He did. Um, and, he, and he rose to the challenge. So fair play. I think, 
you know, and I will just say this, I mean, we'll probably get into it later, but overall, it was a good night of boxing um, for the zone team, you know, because you got Massive. to think of it, of who was on the card and, you know, they, they're trying to build these guys' names and I, I found it quite, quite interesting they didn't make it USA versus Russia with Bivol Smith Jr. Don't yeah. think it probably would have worked in their favour, but, nah. you know, overall, I think everybody that fought probably would have won a lot more fans because they came with a good style, you know, exactly. it wasn't... Um, a, a kind of sheepish style or on the back foot. It was constantly coming forward and attack. So yeah, I was I was really impressed with with that on the whole. And it was a stateside debut. Precisely. I mean, if you want to be obviously Callum Johnson's a name here mm -hmm. amongst the hardcores, Dimitri Bivol as well. But establishing them stateside, yep. that was imperative that they got off to that kind of start. Yeah, no, definitely. So um, so yeah, so from that point of view, um. Definitely looking forward to that. So listen, I'm just gonna. I can see uh, young young Tom's on the line list. I'm gonna open it up for young Tom, young Tom. L l let's get his feedback. How you doing, sir? Hello, Joe Raffi. How are you guys doing? Uh, Not too doing bad, well. man. Well? Not too bad. Yeah, all is well. All is well. Good, good. Um, uh, what's um on your mind, mate? Um, how did you? What did you make of the boxing last weekend? Yeah, just going to take it back to uh, Rafi's point about um, the fine-tuning Anthony Yard um, at this particular stage of his career. I mean, so he gets a lot of criticism, him and Tunde and the rest of the um, the camp, about kind yeah. of how do you measure this kind of step-up that he's been, um, you know, talked about. He's obviously ranked second with the uh, WBO uh, mandatory for Kovalev when they do order, when the governing body do order the fight. Um, but I mean... There's only so much you can criticism and stick you can give him. Like he's 17 fights as a professional. He's only had a handful of amateur fights, um, and he's still plying his trade. He's still gaining that experience um, to step into the the corridors of world level. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a gap between the likes of um, his opponent from the weekend and Kovalev. There's a massive gulp in class there. Um, yeah. but I would like to see him step up domestically. Um, I do understand that. As kind of boxing accelerates, fans get um, more impatient. They demand these uh, big fights, especially when a British fighter is um, that high up in the rankings. So, I mean, I don't think he's ready for a Kovalev um, in terms of his experience. Uh, but, I mean, can't really cut him down for taking a fight like that. Um, I mean, regardless of the result, it's an experience in itself. Kovalev's obviously um, at the back end of his career. He's had the experience. He's been around the block. He's been in those tough fights. Um so, yeah, no, I mean, Yards um, is managed by a good team. Tunde knows himself uh, when to catch Kovalev at the right time. I'm yeah. not saying that Yards can beat Kovalev. I'm not sticking up for um, Tunde and Anthony saying that they're almost, um, you know, certain of beating Kovalev because, I mean, Kovalev still can be classed as the best in the division. Um, yeah. Although Bivol and kind of Baturbi have are the, the kind of new um, to the crown, really. So... No, it'll be interesting to see what their next move is. I do think he's going to have a few more uh, warm-up fights, uh, so to say, uh, yeah. before he does step up to Kovalev. But, I mean, by the end of the year, if he gets that shot, then, you know, fair play to him. Let him, uh, let him go over to America, um, get that experience and get the, get the shot at the world title to prove everyone wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, no, just get your feedback, um, or I'll say predictions and comments, Tom, on... Uh, the yeah. fight coming this weekend. I know. I know you're going to be concerned with the St. Patrick's Day schedule more than anything else. But before we get ahead, of, before we get to that, <laughs> Spence Junior versus yeah. Garcia. How do you see that one playing out? No, I'm on my best behaviour this week, coach. No dreams. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> now, but in all seriousness, um, yeah, I just think Spence is too big for for Garcia. Um, I do think that. Garcia can match Spence in terms of skill, but I just think um, natural size advantage in Spence's favour. Um, I just think because he's had the momentum, Garcia obviously had that timeout. He's come back, he's wrapped up a few wins. Um, I do think the, the momentum slightly in Spence's favour. Um, and then obviously being the naturally bigger fighter um, and with those kind of fights with uh, Furman, Porter, Garcia, um, all as fully fledged uh, welterweights um, in the pipeline, then I do see, you know, Spence not taking Garcia lightly, even though he's moving up in weight. I do generally think he's he's bang up for the fight. I saw the of course. Uh, sort of intro or clip to the face-to-face uh, -to -face they did, um, sort of similar to the gloves are off setup that we have um, over here. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he looks fired up. He looks like he's 
he knows Garcia's strengths. He knows how to. He will know how to negate um, Garcia's aggressive uh, come forward style. Um, and yeah, just I think just imposes size. I think that's going to be a yeah. determining factor on the night. Yeah. I just think his pure size advantage is going to is going to stand him in favour. Yeah. No. Definitely good good points, Tom. Uh, Tom, listen, we've got a couple of callers on the line, um, so we want to get to them um, before we get to yeah. Spence. So, um, yeah, um, appreciate you calling in and definitely all the support, and I'll catch you on Saturday uh, for the Goodwin Show. Yeah, no worries, Coach Raf. Keep doing what you're doing. All the best. Cheers, appreciate thanks, that, Tom. Cheers, thanks. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Going out to 041. Spence, I see you. Just give me, going to go to this call, and then I'm coming to you next. 041. The floor yeah, is yours. Yeah, how are you doing, hello. sir? Hello, hello. Who's calling? Yeah, yeah, it's William from from uh, West London. Nice, nice, William. Thanks for calling in. How are you doing, bro? What's on your mind? Yeah, not not too bad. Uh, listen, guys, I haven't phoned I haven't phoned up for a long time, so I just thought I'll I'll phone in today and, and just listen up a little bit. I I did miss the um I, I missed all, all the boxing all, over the weekend, so yeah. um, I so it's been really informative. Listening to to um what, what you guys have been saying, appreciate my, my, that. My, for for me, it's it's uh, it's it's all about two things, man. I just I just want to know what you guys thought about about um it, it may not be on your agenda, but but um uh uh uh, uh you 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 banks, man. Yeah, you banks, man. <laughs> I, I I know it's past a bit, but what do you think about him? Do you think he's got? A, He's got um, a, a good 2019 to, to look out for because because I really want that guy to blow up, you know. So I, I just wanted to, wanted to th- uh, ask you guys about what, what you think about Eubanks and, and what he's, he's got for, for this year. Yeah, I think that's, and I'm sure you'll agree with us when we say that's a career best win against James DeGale. And uh, that yeah, gives him a massive platform, not just domestically at world level, because James DeGale was a world level fighter. And... Um, For 2019, I mean, there's been talk of also switching weights as well, so it's quite open-ended in that sense. But um, for yourself, what's the? um, You seem quite passionate. Yeah, you seem quite uh, passionate about Eubank going forward. Uh, Where does that come from? Are you a massive Eubank fan? Um. Yeah. Yes, I liked his dad, and 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 it's just it's just I I like I like his combination punches. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. He's a guy who. Who, who doesn't hold back? Um, I'm, I, I know I've spoken to Kojo a few times about our, 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 our big boy um, holding back his, back his shots on AJ. Whenever we've been to see <laughs> Cardiff and stuff like that, holding back his shots. But I just like a punk, a, a, a fighter who goes out there a bit brush, but still gives 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 the combination punches. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. He faces up and gives it. I, I just I just wish that he could blow up this year some more. And and I. And I, I didn't know what, what his plans are for this year, so I just thought maybe you guys could fill me in a little bit about what was what's going on about him. But apart from that, I'm enjoying the show, guys. It's always informative to listen to you guys, so I'm just tuned in now and listen to all you pros give me the do- load down. We appreciate, appreciate that, the kind words, and thank you for the support, my friend. Appreciate that. So we're going to move awesome. on. Thank you very much, William. Hi. Hi. Cheers, nice William. One. So we're now going to open the line to... Famed historian, super pundit, uh, the analytical of uh, that. No, what what should we say? The analyzer of all analytics, Mr. Spencer Fearon. How are you doing, sir? How you doing, coach? How's everything going? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Thank you for calling in. Uh, here with my co-host Rafi. Good evening, Spencer. Hi, Paul, as well. How you doing, bro? Are you good? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad, my friend. So, Spencer, how you doing? But I mean, I know we said uh, we'll get you in the studio. We will still get you in the studio. Um, last minute. Uh, reasons uh, for not for today, but you know, no, no, no problem. I'm doing something later on for um, um, ESPN in in America, so I've got to be in the studio um, later on. So I had to come home and see my kids and and stuff. So I didn't want to be out and like, they're not see me, and then they're not going to see me till later on. So I, you know, it's yes. daddy duties, daddy yes, duties, exactly. my friend. But I'm here anyway, so thanks for having yeah. me on the show, man. No worries, brother. So how you been though? And ESPN, that's a, that's a good good gig. You want to talk to us about that? Yeah. No, he just only just called me in to 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 do something um, for Transatlantic. So, you know what I mean, like I'm saying, I'm just grateful that that I'm, that I'm doing that. Um, as you just saw recently, like ESPN's just done this massive wrap up deal with Tyson Fury, which is a um, hundred and three million dollars, yeah. which was orchestrated by MTK Global. I want people to realize this now. 
Um, it yeah. was it was orchestrated by MTK Global, and he gave the through ball to everybody. Um, they gave the through ball to everybody else. I mean, so big up um, Sandra Vaughan down at MTK Global, um, Bob, Bob Jordan, um, who used to be formerly at ESPN. He's one of the heads down at ESPN, who's now um, one of the top guys down for MTK Global. Um, and and so I'm I'm just grateful to be a part of the team. So yeah, um, off of the back off of the, off of the back of that because I run the foundation, which everybody's seen what we've done in in the last six months since we've been up and running. So yeah, you know I mean I'm just really really grateful for the position that I'm in. Of course, and uh, you touched on the the uh, very small amount of 103 million pounds, which um, is the deal involving it was 103 million dollars. 103 million dollars, sorry, pounds. 80 million pounds. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, involving uh, your man, of course, from MTK, Tyson Fury. In that regard, do you think that MTK have provided the perfect platform to now catapult Tyson Fury's um, brand, so to speak, to the kind of Joshua-esque levels? Well, what, what, we what, they, to... what they have. No, yeah. what, what they have because I think Tyson Fury needs to be on a major network and a major network that could rival the other networks. And so yeah. um, you've got... Um, Deontay Wilder on Showtime, you know what I mean, anti Joshua on Sky and the Zone now. Of um, course, the Zone are growing, yeah. right? So he needed to be on a platform that could rival those, and now he's on a on a on a platform that can rival those. And I'm not going to say necessarily eclipse those, right? But yeah, yeah. he's on a very very big platform right now. Of course, and for him, just to see the man's turnaround in his life. I think all the credit in the world should be given to Tyson Fury. The man literally lost Terence Crawford in body weight. Yeah, right? that's crazy. That's what he did, right? He battled drinks and drugs, right? And mental health issues. And he's come out victorious, even though he didn't get the win when he fought Deontay Wilder. But moralistically, he got the win because of the draw. But moralistically, he got the win. So to see where he has come from to what he what he's doing now and how he's turned around things, how he was how he's being reviled to being revered. Yeah. You've got to give Tyson Fury all the credit in the world. And also, you've got to give a lot of credit to his, his, his young green trainer in, in, in Ben Davison. You know, Most ben, definitely. Like, he's come from relative obscurity as a trainer. Yeah. Um, and, you know what I mean? And he performed in that fight affluently. So all the credit in the world should be given to him too. Most definitely. We do echo that in regards to uh, Ben Davidson specifically. Um, it is interesting, Spencer, that you touched on that there are now three networks associated with the biggest three heavyweights in the world and who are, of course, Joshua, Wilder and Fury. Now, there has been a backlash, so to speak, amongst boxing fans about how that could, on the contrary, be quite, quite problematic in that those fights are now more difficult to make. What's your take on that? Um, I, 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 don't, I don't believe that one bit. And the reason why I don't believe that is because, yeah. um, bottom line, as Don King said to me, bottom line dollar profit is the gain. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If these guys will, will, they will amalgamate, they will amalgamate eventually. Right? HBO did it with Showtime with the Pacquiao um, Floyd Mayweather fight. Once a fight is big enough and is juicy enough, then that will happen. Yeah. How long did we wait for Pacquiao and Floyd? We waited years upon years yeah. to, yes. for, for that fight to be coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us sit down and say, well, we don't know how Floyd would have done against a 2009 version of Manny Pacquiao, right? Yeah. A lot of us would have turned around and said that, right? But it happened when it happened, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I'll this, say this. With this sorry, carry on. Right, with this, um, this won't be dragged out. Because once there's a demand, they will make this thing happen. Because right now, with the cry of social media, with a with a cry on great stations like yourself, with raps on mm. TV, uh, where where you got the, the public who who will show their disapproval right now, um, with the push that we have from social media and all these networks, people listen. Mm. Yes. Right, and networks listen as well. And they go and say, okay, well, these guys, they must be onto something. And when there's an uproar on something, what people say, they, then, then common sense will say, let's, let's, let's bring things together. Let's have this amalgamation and let's make this money. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. It is the money. I don't think there's fear in, in, in none of the guys or, um, or fear of, of each other because you've got to think, Tyson Fury took the fight not because he was afraid of, of took, sorry, took the TV though, not because he was afraid of, 
Deontay Wilder because he proved that already. The guy was out for for three years, came back. He done something that Muhammad Ali couldn't even do. Mm. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just imagine that because he fought two men prior that you wouldn't even hire for sparring. Mm. Yeah. Right. Exactly. exactly. Right. Right. You wouldn't even hire a guy for sparring. We 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 turn the page and say, well, like. Ali's Ali Ali um, nineteen seventy and nineteen seventy one comebacks. Uh, his fights against Jerry Corey and Oscar Bonavina, those guys were top rated challengers. Mm. And when he then eventually fought um, Joe Frazier um, in March of seventy one, Joe Frazier beat him for the for the for the for the super fight. So you got to think Ali actually lost the first real recognized fight in the century super fight. He actually lost that fight. Now. Tyson Fury did all of those things, fought two, two also ran guys with opponents, went in there and fought that. And I don't care what anyone says, the hardest one shot hit um, fighter in the world today is Deontay Wilder. Correct. He is. Yeah, he he has, right. I'm right. I'm not saying he's the most skillful. I'm not saying he's the most uh, 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 ring IQ, the most best general, ring generalship. No, I'm not saying any of those kind of things. I'm saying dangerous. the hardest one punch hitter yeah. in the world today is that skinny boy from Alabama. Yeah. And I just want to say, Here Spencer, uh, just to go back, because I think the key thing um, for me, I think, definitely, I think with this fight, I think, look, with Fury, you know, there was rumours that, oh, I say rumours, a lot of the fans were saying, oh, is this a dark? And they say the pro Wilder fans were saying it's a dark and blah, blah, blah. But I think, to be honest, nobody can say that against Fury for the simple reason that he fought him when he probably was at his weakest. So I would say Tyson Fury today is stronger than the Tyson Fury that fought in December, number one. And number two, 100%. there was there was an element of the Adelaide Bird scorecard, which was so off. And look, I picked Wilder to win that fight. I am a, I like Wilder as much as I like Joshua and Fury, but that was clear. Wilder didn't win any of the enough rounds to, to win that fight. So what Fury saying about by being backed by top rank, Bob Arum, you know, guys that have got a lot of contacts, a lot of networks, you will be, it is a much favourable position for him because if he was to fight Wilder again in May and then again got robbed because I think it's fair to say he won't knock Wilder out. So if he doesn't knock him out, he needs a network that essentially the politics of the game will back him. So I think the top rank deal is fantastic. Um, and I think MCK have done a fantastic job. Um yeah. Listen, listen, let me let me just, let me just tell you this, right? Mm. Um, uh, speaking to Sandra Vaughan, and she was saying to me a few weeks back, "Oh, Spencer, we got something big." I said, "You just tell me what's going on." No, don't worry, Spencer. We got something big. We got something big, and that was it, <laughs> right? So to see it coming to fruition, yeah. And then to see um, just yesterday the deal that was done, which well, I knew about that deal, which was announced of of um, MTK Global fight fights being shown on ESPN, yeah, uh, with their link up with Top Rank. That is just superb because you've got certain guys who, who, are, who, are, who are talent-driven fighters, but they just need that platform. Yeah. And because of that, you're seeing like week after week, um, people just, fighters just sign up with MTK Global. Fighters just sign up with MTK Global. And you have to also look at what MTK Global is actually representing. Mm. It's, it's, it's representing every face of, of, our, of, our, of the global. Everyone. Yeah. And that's what he's doing, and I'm, I'm, and I'm honoured to say that I'm, I'm, I'm part of it. I weren't working on the boxing side; I was working on the foundation side of it. But now to see it pan out, I mean, I'll be doing little bits on the boxing as well too. Yeah. So, um, Spence, I will do want to definitely get you. Um, so I think when we get you in the studio, we'll definitely talk about how the MTK relationship were evolved. Um, how that b b kind of came oh, yeah. in, into fruition oh, yeah. and obviously um, what you're doing with them. We saw the soup kitchen um, on Christmas Day, which yeah. was a great uh, initiative. But for the matter of this week, we do want to touch on, in the lack of time, we do want to touch oh, on a huge on, fight. We've got to talk about what I'm good at talking about, man. Yeah, come on, man. Spence, the fight. <laughs> so Spence Jr. versus Garcia. I think, look, it's well publicised that Spence is... Nicknamed the truth, he's, uh, he's, 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 he was the boogeyman until he started getting called out by these lighter guys, Crawford and Garcia. Um, I'm of the back, I'm picking Spence Jr. But what I want to ask you is, what weaknesses do you think Spence Jr. has that Garcia could exploit? Um, he's susceptible to right hands. Mm -hmm. From his southpaw position, you see, like sometimes when he comes in, um, not that he switches off, but like. Um, how he how he steps in with shots, mm -hmm. he's to getting caught with shots, and be, be, because of that, 
And Garcia is very, very tricky because you've got to think Mexican fighters generally, even though Garcia is American or Mexican, but Mexican fighters don't handle speed well. Historically, they do not handle speed well. Mm. Yeah. Right? You, you, you don't believe me? Think of the greatest Mexican fighter of all time. Who does see that survey? Who most Mexican fighters idolize and model their style on? Mm-hmm. And yeah. if you think about it, you can see, you can see essence of Garcia. Yeah. Uh, you can see essence of, of what Mikey does. Is very... Uh, it, there, are, there, are, there are shades, I would say, sprinklings of Julio Cesar Chavez. But if we flip the page, was it March 17th? Um, 1990, um, Julio Cesar Chavez versus Magic Taylor. He was getting hands. He was getting beat hands down with speed. But the mm-hmm. thing with this is, Errol Spence doesn't possess that quicker hands. It's not like, oh my God, he's dazzling speed. He's a world timed puncher, mm-hmm. right? And he'll he'll march you down, and he's accurate with these shots. He doesn't really waste shots. But we have seen him in the past get caught with right hands, and there is no more world timed right hand in boxing right now I'm saying more well timed yeah. right hand in boxing than I would say than, than Garcia and it's weird here is a man who's a who's a four weight world champion exactly. four weight world champion right now I'm stepping up for the biggest challenge because he raises the challenge so I'm saying moralistically Mikey Garcia has already won this fight and all of and all of the pressure and everything is actually on Errol Spence Jr. Correct, one hundred percent. The pressure, there is no pressure at all on Mikey. Go, Mikey goes. Oh well, you know what? You tried to defend. You went in there. The guy was just too big for you. Okay, the Lomachenko fight is still there. I actually tip Mikey Garcia to beat Lomachenko. Mm. You do? Wow, I do. A... I really do. Oh, yeah, you have right, it. I do. Yeah. But the thing about it is this: yeah. Mikey Garcia did not greatly impress me against Robert Easton Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Right. I was a guy nuts. Yeah, that I was the fight nuts. last year, right? I was Mikey Garcia for me. Yeah. Pardon me? No, I was going to say that was the Easter Junior fight last that took place last year. And yeah, I would have said yeah. um, Garcia, he, he he still was mobile. He still did enough. But you're right. Gar- Spence could probably take a few tips from that Easter Junior fight. Yeah, and most yeah, definitely. Most, most, most definitely. Um, Spence is not as, as fast as Easter Junior. But obviously... Uh, Mikey hits hard enough because he made Robert Easter Jr. go into his shell. Yeah, and he but I remember him. Robert Easter Jr. Yeah, uh, exactly. Mm. Right? So, yeah. um, but looking at that, I'll still say Errol Spence because I've, I've, I've known Errol Spence a, a little. I've known Errol Spence since the 2012 Olympics. Mm. Um, yeah. His dad's actually Jamaican. So, yeah. it's like, um, and I spent some time with him when I was out in Vegas um, 2014. I spent some time with him as well. Nice, nice guy. Um, very, very good boxer. And the nicest thing is this, when you see guys come from relative obscurity to the levels that there are right now, it's, it's a nice it's a nice thing to see yeah. and to witness. Um, but I am, I really am a Mikey Garcia fan. I'm just being real. I'm yeah. a fan of Mikey Garcia more than I'm a fan of Errol Spence. Yeah. Of course. And then I share right? that view. Because I think, yeah, yeah, I am. Because he, to me, he embodies boxing. Just that, that Mexican style that, you know what I mean? I'm, not, I'm just here to just go give it to I like how he gave it to Adrian Broner as well, just walked him down. Mm, I, yeah. I just like the guy. But I just think this maybe could be a little bit too much of a bigger jump. Lloyd Hunnigan always used to say to me as a kid, it's, it's never whether you're, you're, you're big enough to fight at the weight, it's whether you're good enough. Mm. And I think Mike, Mikey Garcia Correct. is good enough to fight at the weight, but I just think he's in there um, with, a, with a good big end. And he's a good little but I think he's in there with a very, very good big one who, down the stretch, I think the, the strength of, of Errol Spence is, is grinding power as well. You don't believe me? Just ask. Just yeah. ask uh, On that point, uh, Kel Brook. Yeah, just ask Kel Brook. It's grinding power. It's not, oh my God, like one shot. Oh my goodness gracious. It is grinding. It's hurtful, spiteful, and tenacious shots. Of but course. you know what? I could see this fight going very late. And I'm being real. It wouldn't surprise me if Mikey Garcia, if Mikey Garcia was to outpoint him um, and sneak it out. But there, there's only a couple guys that can step into the waterweight elite mm, exactly. as being a lightweight fighter. Yeah. And 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 pull that off. As we know, like Roberto Duran done it in 1980. But the thing about it is this: when Roberto Duran done it in 1980, um, he had four or five fights at waterweight. Yeah, yeah. The season up at that division, and as much as. Um, you can be sparring all you want and, and we know for facts that um, Garcia spars 
big men, like light heavyweights in the gym, and turns them over. I'm telling you this now, mm. right? Yeah. But under the spotlights, under the, under the under the, under that kind of pressure and things like that, uh, I, I just got to, I just got to lean for Errol Spence. Yeah, yeah. Spence. Um, I think both of us can agree that the welterweight division is shark infested waters. There are an incredible amount of top top fighters. Did it strike you by surprise that Mikey picked Errol? Because Errol, you'd have to think, would sit uh, towards the top end of that um, top pool of fighters in the division no, towards the elite he, end. No, because he's been calling out these guys. He's been calling out Furman and Garcia and, and Danny Garcia from way back. So no, no, not at all. Here was a guy who's he, he's a profound professional boxer that... And he has that, and he has that right. He's a four weight world champion. You, you're a four weight world champion in this day and age. And possibly Even though five. Fragmented, but he he's been a four weight world champion. Where arguably, the time that he's been a world champion, he's been the best in the division. Yeah. I mean, was it uh, Zatikan when he knocked him out? Yeah. Who, what? That was a horrible. That was a horrible knockout. Yeah. That's where you have to look and say, "Well, this guy's for real, and he he is for real." Yeah. But I just I just think like. You being up against this guy here, obviously you can see the flaws, and you can see um, um, flaws in in Errol Spence. Yeah. But whether you can sustain that pressure on Errol Spence to 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 get that win, because you're not gonna you're gonna say like you're gonna try and be like sneaky and throw these shots and stuff, uh, man. I I just got um I got Errol Spence winning this fight, man. But yeah. all the credit in the world, I'm trying to tell you, there's no shame. Yeah. And he could, and he could come up second best in this fight, and he's still going to win because he could drop down in weight, and he could still dominate at one forty, or he could dominate um, at, at lightweight. Yeah. Of course, and Mikey Garcia does uh, most definitely um, sit in that top ten pound for pound ranking, if you like, as you would say uh, mean, universally. Mike, Mikey, Mikey Garcia is top three right now. Top three right now, and what would then would a win? On Saturday, or we should, we should say for our time, Sunday morning, uh, would that put him top of the tree for you, or is that just a little bit of a stretch too far? Um, if he if he's to win on Saturday, I reckon it make him number two because the unfortunate thing is this: it was just um, very very similar to when it was um, when Roy Jones beat um, Ruiz John Ruiz for the WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World. Yeah, um, or was that July? Was that July or June? Um, Man, we don't have the knowledge like you, bro. All right, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's when it was July 2003 yeah. or June 2003. When he pulled that win off at that time, Lennox Lewis was still um, the W, what was he? He was the WBC heavyweight champion, WBC and IBF champion. Yes. After he threw away the, the, the he got stripped to the WBA title. And Roy Jones was pound for pound the best fighter in the world, but he wasn't the best heavyweight in the world because Lennox Lewis was. So it's kind of one of those ones. Yeah, like, yeah. You could beat a guy because as much as as much as I say like, oh, you could beat Earl Spence. I don't think Earl Spence is the premier world weight in the world. I think who Terrence is then Crawford, for you? Terence Crawford, no doubt. Terence Crawford. So you wouldn't put Keith Thurman. Terence Crawford is the best world weight in the world. Well, for, fair Thurman. enough. I rate Keith Thurman. I think Keith Thurman is an excellent fighter. Yeah. Um, but um, against uh, Lucito Hope, uh, Lopez in his last, he didn't overly impress me, even though he's been out for a little while. Yeah. Um, when he when he uh, when he fought Lewis um, Castillo, sorry, when he Lewis Calazzo, sorry, yeah. when he fought Lewis Calazzo, Lewis Calazzo hurt you with a body shot, man. Mm. And and this is the same Calazzo that got soundly outpointed by Amir Khan. Yeah. And I know I know I've known Louis for a hot minute, but regardless, I know you. You you are long in the tooth. You can fight, but you're long in the tooth. So there's something missing. There's something to me in 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 the the full makeup of someone like Keith Thurman. There's something missing. Yeah, he can bang viciously, but there's something missing inside of him. Yeah. He's still an exciting fighter, but I would actually say that the top premier um, fighter at at one four seven is actually Terence Crawford. Terence Crawford brings a whole lot. To the, to the, he's, he's, he's an incredible fighter and not only that it's like I listen to other guys and Dave Cooler worked in the corner of uh, uh, Ricky Burns when he when he submitted his WBO world title to Terence Crawford and he said Terence Crawford is the best fighter I've ever seen mm, yeah I mean I'll say this 
And, and, and I, him saying that, remember, he's worked um, with Ryan Rogues and Ryan Rogues for Canelo. Yeah. So for you to say that, then, brother, he's the best fighter in the world. I mean, and I definitely would say to you with, with Crawford, um, I find that interesting that you say he's got the most to, in the division, the most premier fighter. I, I want to see that fight. I will be honest. I, I do think Spence beats him, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's got a uh, better, you know, necessarily from a skill set, um, that his skill set is, is, is much better than Crawford's. I just think what I like about Spence, and I think this is what's going to be really interesting for Garcia is if he is successful with those right hands, can he capitalise on it? Because so far, what we have seen with Spence Jr. is even when somebody has a bit of success, like you said, like we know he was knocked down. He switches it up on He you. switches it up. So for me, he does show a bit of IQ. And I think sometimes because he's all about his power, people forget that, you know, he's an Olympian. He does have a good, he's got good ring generals, generalship. He is good on his feet. You know, he knows how to, to cut off the ring. He knows how to walk you down. So I just think so far, and this is why I love this fight, Spencer hasn't fought, faced anyone that, could outfight him, you know, bring more dog to the ring um, or, or just wanted it more. I think, you know, Spence is a fighter. If he is in a little bit of trouble, namely, we've only really seen it in the knockdown in the book fight, um, but he bites down and then he literally takes them out. So, yeah, for me, I can't wait for this fight. Um, uh, and I think it's going to be a, a really, um, in terms of like a spectacle, I think we potentially could be looking at a candidate for fight of the fight of the year, from in my opinion. Um, yeah. What I was going to ask you though, Spencer, is because um, one of the things that I think is a strength of Mikey Garcia is his mobility. You know, and it's not just that he moves around; it's actually he doesn't stop moving his shoulders, his head. He's always on the move. Do you think the fact that Spence Jr. has to punch down because of the height difference that could help Garcia? Because if he's constantly moving. You know, when he's making Spence Jr. miss, it's the counter. Um, so do you think that could help him at all? Um, you got to look on... Uh, Mike Garcia is a very, very well-timed fighter. Mm. Um, and he's got incredible balance. I like how he positions himself to throw shots. Mm -hmm. But you're looking at someone like Errol Spence that's going to be punching down. And he's a southpaw, right? He's punching down. He does that kind of corkscrew... Um, left hand yeah. to, to to Mikey's solar plexus, it could slot Mikey. So it could be a disadvantage because Mikey is going to have to fight on the back foot because if he does come forward, I mean, as George Foreman famously says, never follow a puncher, right? Mm. So he's, he's going to have to create openings to, to capitalize um, with that right hand of his because, um, trust me, Mike has got a really good right hand. Really good, really good right hand. Yeah. So he's gonna have to that's what he's gonna have to do. He's gonna have to wrong foot Spence to make Spence chase him, but to wrong foot him. Yeah. Of course. And like to use his backhand so it, it negates where Spence positions his front right foot when he's trying to get up close to four those right hooks. Yeah. And um off the back of I'll play devil's advocate here. Mikey Garcia does the business this weekend. Does he stay at the weight for you, or is there? A seat, do you think there's a glass ceiling above his progression? Do you think he could climb another weight, or do you think that's sort of where the sky is? Um, how tall is he? Five six. I think he's five six. I five see. six, five seven. Yeah, I think five seven. Yeah, he's yeah. five six. Yeah, so, um, listen, man, Roberto Drum was shorter than he, and I see like this guy trying to um, test himself against greatness. So no, I, I don't see I don't see nobody up in the junior middles for him to go and fight because I think that'd be way too big. Mm, yeah, um, I think well wait, he, I reckon he could stay at well away if he gets a comfortable win. Um, but I, I like looking at body language. I like seeing like the head to heads and stuff. And he really believes that he's winning on the weekend. Yeah, so yeah. much that he's speaking so wicked that Matthew Macklin is now changing his prediction and thinking that yeah, Garcia and like a lot of people I've noticed like there's a, there's a lot of guys who are saying right well, they got Garcia to win this fight. Um, but I think if he was to win on the weekend, I think there'd be some juicy fights there for him at Yeah, I mean mega fights there for him. Like him and Sean Porter, that'd be a great fight because I think stylistically they would gel, yeah. right? Um, and Sean Porter was very, very fortunate uh, to to win over UGAS on the weekend. Very fortunate. Mm. Um, so there's there's that fight there. There's a Keith Furman fight there. I mean, even you if know, you look at a household there's name, there's, there's Pacquiao. I, I know. I mean, I know you'll have Terence Crawford, Thurman, but even to make himself a bit more of a household name, you've got um, Pacquiao. 
because obviously he's campaigning in that yeah. world to where he is well. So Pacquiao versus yeah. Garcia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're right, Spence. I just wanted to quickly go back because um, we are going to have to move on to, 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 to open the calls. But um, I was going to just say, for me, um, I've noticed that a lot of people are giving Garcia and I think it's just his confidence. But I, I have to be honest, I feel like I've seen this many times before and I felt in the face-off, in just my opinion, I felt Spence Jr. was the more confidence. I felt probably his ruthless, direct and blunt sort of uh, uh, language um, at, at the time. I think that might have not put Garcia off, but I don't know. I think Garcia wasn't expecting that. I don't know if he feels that he's slow or whatever, but I don't know. Garcia, Spence Jr. was so confident and he was speaking so directly about, listen, I'm better than you in this way and this way. And Garcia, his... His response to that was a bit clever, but I didn't feel it was from the heart. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just getting this feeling from Spence. Um, although he's again, he's my mate. He's my, he's, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of his. I just feel that he's really going to put on a show. Hometown Dallas, um, chance to be a pay per view star or become more of a pay per view star. Um, I'm going to put it on. But Spence, I'm going to get the last word from you, um, and then um, yeah, we're going to have to move on to some open callers. But I appreciate you calling in, and definitely look forward to getting no, you no problem, down man. the show. On, yeah, I mean, on a, on a, on a to be on honor to be on the show perfect I mean you guys keep on doing what you're doing man Thank appreciate you. the kind words Spencer cheers um, so your predicting is Spencer early win or points or KO um, I've got Spence I've got I'm, you know, I'm going to go I'm going to go Spence late stoppage yeah, late, yeah. From, around late, um, from from round nine onwards, I think Spence can pull out the stoppage. Yeah, um, can just grit it out. Um, that's what I'm going to go with. Yeah. No. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, Spence. Listen, I'll catch up with you soon this week. Um, we're going to move into the next caller. So, thank you very much for your time, bro. Thanks, Spence. All right, brother. Take, right. care. take God care. God bless, man. Cheers. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye. And we're going to go on to nine one zero, nine one zero. Hello, the floor is yours. Hello, coach. How are you? Not it's Sam. Uh, how you Raph. doing, Sam? You all right? I'm hey, great, mate. I'm great. First yeah. of all, love to chat with Spencer, man. Keep, I want to keep him. I want to see him on there, man. Uh, yeah, I want to see him on the show. We, 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 we're, we're working on that. We're work- he was going to be live, but as you said, um, priority calls. But yeah, we are tra- working on getting him on the show uh, for the next next two weeks, if not next week. So cool. appreciate I'm that. I'm looking feedback. forward to it. Perfect. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Appreciate that. No, let's get into it. Yes. Let's get into it. Yeah. Follow me, Sam. Um, so, what yeah, what, what did, did you... I mean, Spence Garcia, I think that's the big fight um, topic this weekend. What's your thoughts on that fight? No, of course. Um, it's actually one of those 50-50s. Um, it's actually a genuine 50-50 and one, a 50-50 that I feel that the American scene has been lacking for some time. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel that credit to both men putting it all on the line to try and see who's the best. I do feel Spence has that... Like uh, Spencer said, that just horrible, nasty, just flora of just Vicious. punches. Like, yeah. Just nasty. But I feel like Garcia's just got... The, he's, I think he's better technically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel that if, if Spence Jr. is supposed to win this fight, what he needs to do is just really come very aggressive. He needs to really take him into territories and really get him into like a dogfight almost and just show him no respect at all. Um Otherwise, if he doesn't do that or yeah. he doesn't knock him out, I think on points he's just going to do him over. Personally, um, just on points, I think it will be um, Garcia is too much of a tactician for Spence. I feel, yeah, personally, but it is one that can go either way because you've got the power and the attributes in Spence Junior, and you've also got just the technicality and the just cultural, you know, the Mexican style of fighting from um, Garcia. Of course. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to watching it early in the morning. And mm. I hope it's one that I feel that I should have stayed awake for and I'm happy to have stayed up rather than a few of the stinkers I've watched recently like um, Pacquiao, Bruno. That was very disappointing. So yeah. um, what's it going to be televised on? Do you know? It's going to be uh, televised on ITV4 from 2 a.m. onwards. We put a post up earlier. And obviously uh, for UK viewers, that's going to be... Um, that's going to come as a lot more welcome news than uh, paying for the pay-per-view to box on. So, yeah, ITV4 is your place to go at 2 a.m., my friend. Oh, ITV4. Wow, nice. Yeah. Top rank doing it big. Yeah, Not they top are. Um, PBC. PBC, PBC, yeah. PBC, PBC yeah. doing it big. PBC, that's a good fight to watch for free. Yeah, um, yeah that's good. 
Yeah, Sam, other topic. We... Hit me, guys. What's the story? What's the other story? Uh, sorry, you said um, the other story. Ask a question. Ask a question. Yeah, um, Sam, uh, flipping that back onto you, you mentioned about Errol Spence and uh, Mikey Garcia, the contrast of styles in that Errol needs yeah. to unload a barrage of punches and uh, do what he does, really yeah. vicious shots. Um, yeah. Do you feel that given that Mikey hasn't operated at this way, he has pushed himself, of course, he's a four-weight world champion, uh, this time he's operating at welterweight. And as Spence yeah. said there, um, this is uncharted territory for him. And so later down the line, you said the Mexican skill set, that um, slipperiness, that elusiveness, do you think that that could start to fade towards the championship rounds given the weight discrepancy? Look, I mean, I, I mean, generally it would start to fade when you, you get stepping into unknown territory. Um, yeah. But I do feel that someone like him, who's a uh, who's an utmost professional, carries himself in such a high way and yeah. am, uh, an admirable fashion. I feel like someone of his quality and his level of being an elite athlete, I feel that it won't really phase him as much. Yeah, the atmosphere won't phase him as much. Uh, I don't feel weight or anything will phase him as much because, like uh, Spencer, uh, Spencer was saying that he's been spar he spars light heavyweights and whatnot and bigger guys in the gym. Um, and I get it's different on the lights, but someone of his caliber, full weight, like you said, four time world champion. I think that he'll handle himself. I just think Spence Jr. needs to come with it. I, I, I haven't been impressed with um, Spence Jr.'s past couple of fights, past post Kell Brook. Um, okay, Lamont Peterson, uh, that's okay, but I, I just yeah. don't really feel he's gone into. Um, he, he's not, I don't really feel he's building his career into the true champion we want him to be. I feel that his maybe that's due to promoter issues or politics that you yeah. know we all know about. But I just don't feel he's carried himself. I think this is a good defining fight for someone like um, Junior because I yeah. just do really feel that will kind of solidify his name as you know what I'm here. But I still think Crawford on his day would yeah, yeah. blow through all of these guys. <laughs> Standard. Yeah, and this fight is overdue, Standard. as you say. Um, it was two. <clears throat> sorry, it was two years ago in May 2017 that he fought Kell Brook, and since then he hasn't had any big fights. So what's he done exactly? Exactly. Who are we talking about? Exactly. I thought you guys are wrong on that one, to personally. Big, I think, big fights. Nah, I mean, but there wasn't, no, then? nobody wanted to fight him. He tried to fight Porter. Porter wasn't interested. Thurman wasn't interested. Um, Pacquiao lost to Jeff Horn. So I think to say, oh, the big fights, is similar to that Mayweather thing. I think you've got to know the timeline. For me, um, he was chasing the big fights. I mean, look how long it took for him to get Brooke. Do you know what I mean? So you've got to remember, is with, with Spence, the weirdest thing is, I mean, even last year we had, I think when Danny Garcia for um, Sean Porter they were all kind of arguing amongst themselves and acting a tough guy to fight each other but none of them were calling out Spence and he was laughing like look at these guys they call each other out but they don't call me um, it's taken the lighter weight guys which I give them full props for um, that have come out and then said we want Spence Jr but if you go on any tape you won't find Thea Thurman saying it you won't find um, not even Pacquiao you won't find Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia you won't find Sean Porter like openly saying we want Spence but you do get it with Garcia no, and you do get it with Crawford. He is dangerous. Yeah. No, of course. He, 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 he is dangerous. And like I said, um, maybe that was me being a bit harsh and a bit OTT, but I said also yeah, very the politics OTT, so got yeah, in the way. No, but the politics, <laughs> the politics definitely can get in the way. The dead politics can. I, I, I do feel that politics get in the way, but I just don't feel Spence Jr. has become the champion I want to see him be. Um, yeah. I just feel that waterweight division needs someone to really step up and I get it we've got the Keith one time Thurmans or whatnot, but yeah. I just feel that boxing needs a new face in the waterweight division and I feel that Spence Jr even though he's not a new face he's been there for time but I don't really feel he's had his massive breakthrough like he's fightless yeah okay yeah, he's okay. up there yeah, but I, I, I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that, and he's been a champion like, a, like since that time, and it's just frustrating from a fan perspective. Mm. I want to see him in all the big fights. I want to see him yeah. unify. I want to see him calling people up. I just don't really feel it's, it's come across. But I, um, it's going to be interesting. It's definitely yeah. one to watch. Yeah, exactly. So listen, watch. Sam, listen, we're going to go to our next caller. Um, but listen, appreciate you calling in and giving the support as usual. Um, but yeah, look forward to kind of everybody watching his fight on the weekend and hearing your views next week. Yes, mate. Cheers. Everyone go follow Rats on TV. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very Appreciate much. That, Appreciate that, Sam. Thank you for Cheers. calling in. Bye-bye. And we're going out to 822. 822. The floor is yours. Hello. 
Ben and Kojo, you are. Right? Yes, who's speaking? Michael. Yes, what's going on, Michael? You well? Yeah, I'm all right, pal. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. What's on your mind, mate? Big, 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 big fights happening this weekend? Yeah, man, the Spence and Garcia fight sounds really interesting. It's going to be a good one. I think Spence will beat Garcia due to, um, due to his viciousness. Yeah. yeah. And Garcia's, Garcia's now aging. He's, what, 31 now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And do you think that could oh. possibly negate the fact that he's the more experienced? I think it'll be a hard fight for Spence because of experience. Mm. Yeah. That's, you know what? That's but something think, people haven't think, said. That's a good point. But I think he will nick it. Yeah. And um, then we also have the Khan and Crawford fight coming up, isn't it? In April. Exactly. Exactly. That's a big one. <laughs> Do you see the winner of, um, well, we see, I see Crawford being Khan. Do you see that fight happening with Spence? Um, do you know what? I would say it's going to be very tough because of the politics. I think before Crawford gets a shot, I think you could, as we've been saying in the past, there's a, there's a plethora of wel- welterweights on PBC side that he could fight before he even needs to fight a Crawford. Um, I don't think with any of these guys there's any fear. Um, but I just think, you know, you've got to look at the business side of it and think, will Aram make that fight? Is there is the demand there now as well? I don't think the demand, even though as fans we want to watch that fight, I probably would say for both of these guys, actually the fights that they're having by the end of this year, they could be, they should be bigger names, provided they keep winning. Um, I wouldn't be mad if I saw Terence Crawford versus Spence Jr. sort of next year. Um, at the early part of next year, so hopefully they can get that fight made. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I I agree. Do you see? Do you we see Crawford have having lot, any what? troubles with um with 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 Khan? Maybe with Khan's hand speed, but um, I think I think Crawford will easily adapt through the rounds. Yeah, yeah. He will switch his stance quite a lot, which will put Khan off, I believe. Mm-hmm. And he'll catch he'll catch him he'll catch him with a, with a good shot. I see Crawford winning with a knockout. So you think it could be a Canelo uh, repeat then in that sense, where Khan has some success early on with that speed, but then um, it turns out to be quite short lived, and he'll be dealt with a very concussive shot. Yeah, yeah, he'll get cool with a with a big shot. Maybe yeah. a, maybe a shot from over the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you manage to catch the show on the Friday evening at the Royal Albert Hall with Anthony Yard? Uh, yeah, I watched it on TV. Yeah, and what were your oh, thoughts? Yeah, I think it was, it was good. It was good. It was good. Impressed by the you guys there? No, no, no. We we went. We we did. We went there. I think not, uh, Tom from the team was down there. Um, but in terms of uh, impre- who impressed you on the, on the night? Uh, the boy done very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boy done very well, and um, the guy after well, I forgot his name. Liam. But, Willi- um, he, that's right. That's yeah. right. William. Williams. Liam Williams. Yeah, he, he beat Mullen. He done, he done really well. Mm. And the and the good and the maddest thing is the fans weren't really on his side when he was coming out, but <laughs> yeah, he Bloody. still took for the man. Yeah. Hundred percent. You know, he done what he had to do. Yeah. Um, but I think the welterweight division is very interesting, especially in 100%. the UK. Also, we've got Josh Kelly. Yeah. You now we have big prospects like Chris Congo. Yeah. Yeah. In the exactly. making, you know. Yeah, we're looking forward yeah, to I've seeing. Yeah, I've seen a lot of um, seen a lot of stuff going on on Instagram with him and Freddie Kuit today. Yeah. Funny enough. Oh yeah, is that something that you can make? That Oh, well, from what I've seen, Freddie Kowitz willing to take the fight. He's saying Congo doesn't want the fight, but from what everyone knows in the scene, Congo's willing to fight anybody. Well, I think it's a good a fight. Big fan of yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of Congo. I mean, for me, we interviewed Chris Congo probably about 18 months ago now in, in the studio, and we've had him as a caller. And I like him. I think, you know, I always say that he just doesn't get the fair rub of the green. You know, he just needs to get 
that opportunity to sort of like uh, get. He's always he's been on good platforms, but I mean against probably more competitive fights. I think the opponents he's had they've, they've been walks in the park. I think Kewit probably would be an easy fight for him as well, but I think it will be a good fight because he recently won a title. Um, so it'll be a bit of a name, but I think that that's that's probably a good fight to try and make. To be fair, um, to build a bit of a profile. If you think back to what, um, uh, yeah, if you think back to Chamberlain and Camacho, you know what that done for Chamberlain's profile. No matter, even though you know he he, he, went, he lost to Cody, but that really kind of put his profile up there. So I think yeah, that would be a good fight. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a good boost to his profile. So I would say actually. Fighting someone like a Freddie Koo, it would probably be a good move um, if you could get if that could be done by Team Congo or the boys at the combination. Yeah. What do you, yeah. What do you think about other fighters such as Josh Kelly? Yeah, I mean he's definitely. I mean Josh Kelly, you know he's he's, he's been touted now. Yeah, he's he's been touted by Matchroom. He's definitely up there. So I would say for me, um, yeah, he's definitely up there. And you see, there's a good sort of like uh, UK prospects there. So, um, so yeah, so I'll definitely look forward to seeing those guys move. But um, I was just going to say, Michael, we're going to have to move on. Um, we're getting towards the end of the show and uh, we uh, have to try and get another caller before they drop off. So what's, can I just, before you go, what's your prediction for Spence Garcia? Uh, Spence to knock Garcia out ninth, ninth round. Ninth round, wiki. Thank you very much. I hope you call in next week to follow up on that prediction. Cheers. Take Thank care. you for calling in, my friend. Everyone, follow Raps on TV. Great show. Cheers. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate that. Very Take kind. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye. So, yeah, um, before we uh, wrap up, um, I was just going to. Good s- pun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Raf Raff is on the ball. Um, I was going to say, we didn't do our predictions, so let's get our quick predictions for the fight on the weekend. And there are, there's quite a few. Um, <laughs> but let's try and focus on the headline ones. One, one we didn't get to break down in detail, but I think it's going to be a cracking fight. Friday on Sky Sports, it's Tevin Farmer versus John O'Carroll. I think that's a sort of fight that's gone under the radar. I think John O'Carroll's not a bad fighter. I like Farmer. I think defensively he's up there. I just don't know if he's the real deal yet. That's probably where my question is. And I think this is all leading to a big money fight against Javonta Davis. But Tevin Farmer versus Carroll, quick summary of, of your prediction. Tevin Farmer hasn't been beaten in six years and Carroll isn't the man to do it. Nice. So we that that's quite as clear. Yeah, I'm going and I'm uh, I'm going with Farmer. Um, I guess it is about the pedigree, not necessarily the loss in the amount of years is not lost. I think it is about the ped- pedigree and his style is hit and not get hit. So I think Carroll's gonna have to come with high pressure, high aggression all throughout the twelve rounds, which I think he could struggle with. But he's a good fighter, and I don't think you know whether he wins or well, if, he, if he loses this fight, I don't think that's gonna be the end of him. So we're going to now move to the main, main, main event. Yep. WBC Diamond Belt. Garcia uh, versus Errol Spence Jr. What's your prediction? I'm going for Errol Spence on points, but not a massive margin in it. Yeah. I think it'll be a tale of two halves. We'll see very early on Mikey Garcia uh, get a lead of around about two or three rounds. Yeah. And then later on, I think the weight's going to catch up with him. It's going to negate that elusiveness. How about yourself? Yeah, I mean, I have to say I'm going with a Spence knockout. Um, so wow. or, or stoppage. I think Spence is going to get to him. Early um, or late? I think it will be late. Um, I think it will be late. I think, for me, I think you you said something now. I think Garcia will be tricky and awkward to start with. Yeah. I think he's got great movement. You know, Spencer talked about his balance and his positioning. I think those are all key things that will go in his favour. But when I think about Errol Spence Jr., I think this is a guy that is a very talented fighter. I yeah. think the power is in his favour. I think, you know, and I clearly wasn't there, but I know people that were there. You've got to remember, he put hands on Mayweather. Fair enough, it was sparring, but few people even do that in sparring. So I'm not saying that's why he's going to win, but I just think he is a very high-level fighter. And I think we're going to see that on Saturday night. So for me, I'm going El Spence by KO or stoppage, sorry. But I think, yeah, he. I don't think Garcia finishes the fight. Um, and I probably see that 10-11. Yeah, and uh, just before we wrap things up, I want to say a thank you to everyone that's followed us over the past few weeks over on our social media platforms. We appreciate the interaction and uh, we'll continue to uh, post as and when we get information from our sources internally inside the boxing organisation, yes. uh, sorry, inside the boxing community. 
and obviously external mainstream news. So thank you for all the support and we do value those messages. Yeah. And big up all the callers and big up Spencer Fearon for calling in um, and hopefully we'll get you guys get to hear more from him on this platform as well. So guys, we're going to say over and out, but looking forward to kind of speaking to you guys all of next week to break down that fight. Take care, guys. Ciao. Ladies and gentlemen, 